Am I the asshole for telling my sister that she is ruining her child's life with an iPad? My sister, 36F, and her husband have a 10-year-old kid, who for the purposes of this post is called, Jimothy, who me and my husband sometimes babysit on the weekends and on some days I take him to school. As of about a year ago, we started to notice that Jimothy was beginning to develop an American accent. We are Australian. Small kids have phases, and so I didn't want to make it a thing. Over the next few months, the accent got thicker and Jimothy became more irritable. Me and my husband brought this up with my sister, who said that Jimothy wasn't very grumpy when with her. He then started losing interest in almost all activities that he used to enjoy. Again, this was a concern for me. Every weekend it got worse. He would complain of being bored but when we offered an exhaustive list of all the things we could do with him, he said no to every single one. The school year for 2024 started, and on the weekend after that, Jimothy told us that his teacher and a few classmates had asked him how long he'd been in the US before moving to Australia. At this point his American accent was indistinguishable from a general American accent. My husband and I were really wondering what was happening. Then, it was Jimothy's birthday party. His family was invited, including me, and so were all his friends. This was the moment that made me realize to some extent what was going on. He was on an iPad, scrolling some kind of short-form content that I did not recognize. His friends wanted to play with him, and he just did not notice they were there. People were giving him presents, and he acted like he was inconvenienced for having to turn the iPad off. Never before had any of my nieces or nephews reacted like this upon me giving them money and delicious treats. I told my sister that something was going on, and that Jimothy is obviously not in a good way. She seemed very offended that I was questioning her parenting choices, as she put it, and she decided that me and my husband babysitting Jimothy had to stop. The next time I saw Jimothy was very recently, at my niece's birthday party, different parents. Jimothy was completely glued to the iPad. He was noticeably skinnier, which I suspect was because he was forgetting to eat in favor of iPad time. And when anyone went over to talk to him, he would almost instinctively push the screen towards his body so nobody could see. I had to talk to my sister and her husband. I told them what I thought, that a year ago Jimothy was an energetic child who got along really well with everyone, and now he's reclusive and it's obvious from just looking at him that he's skipping meals. My sister denied any changes in Jimothy's behavior. But her husband did admit that I was right to some extent, and Jimothy's friends had stopped trying to hang out with him because he said no 100% of the time. I told my sister she was wrecking Jimothy's life by continuing to let this iPad stuff happen. She started shouting at me, and I walked out of the party. Not the asshole the accent thing is normal, plenty of people complain about kids suddenly speaking with an English, Peppa Pig, or Aussie, bluey accent but the weight loss and behavior change can be an indicator that something serious is going on. It sounds like a really desperate situation that child is becoming very desensitized to whatever he is looking at which could be very adult in nature or it could be something quite sickening. All the red flags are there I just hope your sister soon realizes and then can see that you were only trying to help. As a side note I don't think the internet should be censored I think parents should control their children's use of the internet a lot better because my goodness it's wide open and kids are very savvy with computers. Him emerging himself in his iPad isn't the cause, it's the consequence. It's the tip of the iceberg. My kids love their screens, but they also want to play board games, go cycling in the forest nearby or jump in the pool. There's something else. There's something that caused this kid to focus solely on his iPad. You were right to have concern. If you're truly concerned, and your sister keep a blind eye to the situation, you may want to call the social service. It will hurt your relationship with your family, but better that than letting this kid continue to suffer. Cause he is suffering. Not the asshole. I feel you, the blight of the iPad is endemic across huge swaths of the world. The iPad raises kids, and I am betting he was watching YouTube shorts. I have noticed similar behavior in kids who watch excessive iPad, such as irritability, short attention span, changes in personality. I am sure there are studies to be done on this, but parenting can be a hard task, and getting 10 minutes peace and quiet can be impossible without the aid of an iPad. Rock, hard place, but it does seem like your sister has gone too far with the iPad op. Good on you for calling her out. Not the asshole. Not the asshole, I don't know what's actually going on here but I think this kid needs some professional help.
The whole family, really. Sorry, Jimothy though? Tears of joy, tears of joy. Am I the asshole for forcing three of my kids to get a job and charging rent but not the other? I always told my kids that if they go to college, I'll take care of everything else. Told them that since they were little kids. Now I have four kids. Three daughter and one son. The three oldest, the daughters, decided college wasn't for them. I understood but I told them they can't just sit in my house. I made them get jobs and I charged them rent. 200 a month. They're all doing well but they all still live in the house. My youngest is 18. That's the boy. He graduated three months ago but just got accepted into a college. I did not force him to get a job as I said if they go to school I'll literally do everything else. He himself decided he wanted a job. He works at FedEx and makes about 300 a week. I don't charge him rent and I'm still gonna try to take care of him until he's done with college. My daughter are more than mad that he's not paying anything. They believe him having a job means he can pay something. They also believe I should NT take care of everything for him if he has a job and he's not paying rent. I'm not charging him rent because he's going to school. Him getting a job changes nothing in my mind. He simply saw this as a golden opportunity and is running with it. Am I the asshole for forcing my daughter to get a job and charge rent while my son doesn't have to pay anything because he went to school? Not the asshole my father told all six of us, if you go to university and stay, I'll pay and help you with expenses. If you drop out and want to go back it's on your dime. I am the youngest, my brother closest in age to me went to university and got our degrees because we watched the other four drop out. Your daughters are jealous. You are fair and offered all your children the same opportunity. Your daughters didn't take you up on the offer. Let them find a rent with everything included and board for $200 a month if living in your house is a burden. Not the asshole the deal was if they keep in school you'll pay, the same deal I have given my kids. If not you get a job and pay rent. If you are still in school and make some money on the side, good for you. Your son is just making a better deal for himself because he is more productive. Your daughter should really take that lesson to heart in life. Rewards come when you put in the extra effort. If your daughters aren't going to college or trade school, having them pay rent is fair. It's still much less than what they would have to pay living on their own. Your son decided to get a job to have extra money while in school. Him having the extra income does not mean he should have to pay rent as he is abiding by the terms of your agreement. Not the asshole. Not the asshole. Your son is in school. You support him per the deal you offered all of your children. As far as his wages. 300 a week is not nothing, but it is also not a whole lot. It is really spending money, not, I can live on this, money. Besides. If the elder children are upset and consider their current situation unfair, they are certainly free to find other lodging. Also, I am sorry for backseat parenting, but unless you are charging them token rent so they can save money for some goal, such as a nest egg before they, well, leave the nest, I am not sure you are doing them any favors by charging a very below market rent for them to stay with you indefinitely. It may be time for you to push them out of the nest. Not the asshole. Seems like a damn good deal to me. $200 a month isn't much and they knew your rules from the start. They could all move out and pay $1,200 if they think this is so unfair. Info. Did the other kids jump into the workforce or did any of them do any other kind of training? College is fine but trade schools, internships, and other workforce preparation stuff are equally worthy and important. If they went to one of those and you didn't cover them, I'd say that's unfair. If they went right to working, then you're fine. Edit, fix a typo. Am I the asshole for leaving a family party early when my father's wife wouldn't leave me alone? I, 19 male, became estranged from my father two years ago after he was outed for having an affair. The woman in question is someone he had worked with, who knew he was married, who had met my mom and me, and had seemed a little off at the time. We now know it was because she liked dad and wanted me to like her. I was disgusted with my dad. He tried denying it. Then he tried to convince mom it was a one-night stand and nothing more and he'd forever regret it. Then he wanted her to stay with him and raise the baby he knocked the other woman up with, since they only had me. Even when he moved in with the other woman he kept trying to stop mom from going through with the divorce. He tried to get me to talk to mom on his behalf. 
He told me mom was the one breaking up our family and not him. Then when he gave up and accepted mom wouldn't take him back, which is when the other woman lost the baby, he tried to get me on board with things. I ignored all calls and texts from him. I couldn't block him while still a minor. But I didn't reply and I didn't see my dad face to face during this. I knew I wanted him out of my life for good. He tried to make me see him but he failed. And once I turned 18 it was over for him. He ended up marrying the other woman and now they're expecting a kid together. I don't want anything to do with any of that, including the baby, and yes even if I don't have to see them I have zero interest in knowing that child and any future children. I still see the extended family. Which is why I was at a party they also attended, but weren't technically invited to. During the party dad's wife approached me and told me she wanted to talk, I said no and walked away. I walked away from her again. The third time she spoke before I could move and said she wants her baby to know their brother and she wants me to be a part of their family. She wants to know me and have me for dinner and maybe I could spend some time with them. She tried the whole, we're family now, crap and I left early because I did not want to deal with it. I thank the hosts who were already annoyed that she and dad were there. A couple of dad's siblings want him around still and the others don't but to keep the peace they let them stay. The two siblings of dad who think we should all be easier on dad and forgive him were so pissed at me for leaving early because then the rest of the family turned on dad. They told me I could have spoken to the woman and not taken it out on her, since she didn't do anything to me. And leaving was an OTT reaction and not a mature one which caused family disharmony. Am I the asshole? Not the asshole. Since she didn't do anything to me. Excuse me? She did, in fact, do something to you. This woman knowingly and willingly had an affair with a married man. She happily helped your father destroy your family. And leaving was an OTT reaction and not a mature one which caused family disharmony. You peacefully left instead of causing a scene. The only ones causing family disharmony are the cheaters and their enablers. If she wants a family where everyone accepts her and her baby with open arms, she probably shouldn't have been a homewrecker. She thinks everything resets to neutral once she has the ring on her finger? Not the asshole. Not the asshole. Family disharmony. You know what causes family disharmony? Cheating on your wife and getting your affair partner pregnant. Not the asshole. My dad's partner tried something like this with me. But my sisters and I were already in our 30s. This woman tried to introduce me to my step-siblings and called herself my stepmom. They probably heard my response in the next county. I talk to my dad twice a year, and I'm fine with that. He's the one who wrecked the marriage, he can live with the consequences. You're an adult now, you do you and, as long as you're okay with it, ignore your relatives who spout the whole family BS. It takes more than blood to be family. Not the asshole. Even disregarding the whole messy situation, following you around at a party and pestering you talk to her is over-the-top behavior. Continuing after being rebuffed three times certainly indicated it wasn't going to stop and that leaving was your best option. Family disharmony took place long ago and wasn't exacerbated by you leaving. I've left parties after being stalked by MLM zealots. Skeptical smiley face. Not the asshole. You don't want to associate with cheaters. What's not to get? If the woman wanted to have a relationship with her partner as older children, she should have gone for a widower or someone that was already divorced before she sunk her claws into him. Is it all her fault? Of course not. You can't have sex with a married man that doesn't want to have sex with anyone but his wife. But she doesn't get to play the poor, misunderstood stepmom. Am I the asshole for not letting my friend use my apartment as a crash pad whenever she's in town? I 25F, live in a major city where a lot of my friends from college often visit for work or vacations. One of my close friends, Emily, 26F, lives in a different state but frequently travels to my city for business. Whenever she's here, she asks to stay at my apartment, and for the most part, I've been happy to let her crash with me to save on hotel costs. However, lately, it's become a bit overwhelming. Emily visits at least once a month, and she usually stays for 4-5 days at a time. When she's here, she treats my place like a hotel. She comes and goes as she pleases, doesn't really help with cleaning up, and expects me to be around to hang out when she's free, even though I have my own life and responsibilities. Last month, 
I gently told Emily that while I love seeing her, I need some more space and suggested that she consider staying at a hotel or splitting her visits between my place and other friends. She didn't take it well. She accused me of not being a good friend and said that since I live alone and have the space, it shouldn't be a big deal to let her stay. I tried to explain that it's not about space, but about feeling like my home isn't my own when she's here so often. Now, she's barely speaking to me, and some mutual friends think I'm being unreasonable for not wanting to help her out. Not the asshole. You don't owe her free accommodation when she feels like popping by. Four or five days a month is a lot to have someone over that doesn't do anything around the house. I get wanting to stay with you, but she should pull the weight around the house, cook you dinner as a sign of appreciation, clean up after herself. You did the right thing and honestly you could have done this sooner. Not the asshole. She is not a friend but a freeloader who wants a good thing but doesn't want to pay for it. Not the asshole. If she's traveling on business, her employer should provide her a hotel. If it's her business and she can't afford a hotel, she's underfunded and not your problem. Not the asshole. Why can't she stay with all these other friends that think you are being unreasonable? If she is traveling for business, would she even have to pay for a hotel? Wouldn't business expenses cover that? How does she get to travel so often and for so long? Does she even contribute food? A true friend would not treat your place like a hotel. They would contribute. They would clean up after themselves. They would not expect you to be at their beck and call every time they visit. She is a mooch. Not the asshole it's your place and you're entitled to decide who gets to come by and who doesn't. If it's too much then it's too much and that's okay, it's your space, your rules. Not the asshole. Have you considered that your friend might be pocketing the money her employer gives her for expenses? hotel, food, etc., while on a business trip? If she gets a fixed sum instead of a reimbursement of actual costs, this might be why she is so eager to stay at your place. Also, you are not a doormat and your private house is not a hotel. Don't let people bully you. If your mutual friends think you are unreasonable, they can host Emily themselves.